Hey everybody, PS360, back for more Turok 2 after a fairly lengthy hiatus. And we're gonna jump into level 3. Just as soon as I can remember where level 3 is at. There we go. Welcome to the Death Marshes. The Death Marshes. The Death Marshes are home to the mighty Perlin, a primitive and brutal race of ape-like creatures. The Perlin regard humans as weak and squeaking insects, and are deeply resentful of the progress humankind has made as the centuries have come and gone. The Primogen has fooled the Perlin into believing that he will turn the Lost Land over to them once they have helped free him. Little do the Perlin know that the Primogen intends to wipe them out as soon as Turok is no longer a threat. Though they are unpredictable and untrustworthy, the Primogen has armed the Perlin with a very limited reserve of high-tech weaponry and ammunition. Your mission objectives are as follows. Rescue five prisoners. Destroy three ammunition storage facilities. Locate the energy totem and defend it at all costs. So the Death Marshes are home to the Perlin that we saw in Turok 1. Oh, there's already one of the ammo dumps. Uh, doesn't... Hmm. Doesn't seem to be a way to get up there from down here. But I'm sure we'll come across it later. And the Death Marshes are also home to that putrid uh, death water from the River of Souls. So let's try to keep out of it. Anyhow, this is the homeland of the Perlin that we met in Turok 1. There's, like most other species in Turok 2, several different uh, forms, a hierarchy of sorts to these guys. Shotgun. So let's open it with a trip down memory lane. Low. This is the War Club. This is pretty much Turok 2's version of the Perlin from Turok 1. They've got a lot of the same attacks. They run up to you. They kind of, well, sort of run. Run on their hands like large apes do. They've got the same shockwave attack. They've got the same punching attack. And they do have a new trick up their sleeves, which we'll see in a little bit. First, I'm going to get confused. Low. And back into the second Perlin in uh, the Death Marsh's hierarchy. That is a gunner. They're smaller than the War Clubs are, but to make up for it, they carry around a chain gun and a large backpack filled with small rocks. That's their ammunition. God, I love the music in this level. And you saw those clouds of dust there. The gunner's backpacks do not take damage at all. There is location-specific damage on them. If you don't hit them in the body, nothing happens. They don't take damage, they don't even seem to care. They're also everywhere. Now they... Mag 60. It did mention at the beginning that they were outfitted with limited ammo and weapons. You could see they're the same shockwave, but they had to... It looked like it charged it up a little bit first. 
So I don't know if that means that they're supposedly carrying some kind of gauntlets or other type of device that's giving them the ability to make shockwaves now, whereas the original ones just kind of hit the ground really hard. The Gatling guns are obvious weapons, though. And there you just saw the War Club's new trick for Turoktu. It picks up rocks and throws them at you. I mean, aside from the influence given in by the Primogen, they're pretty much still a tribal society. They're just now a tribal society with guns. And one of the other new enemies is nearby. Two of the other new enemies, depending on how far you want to stretch the definition. These wasps are just awful. And if we don't take out the nest that they're coming out of, they will never stop spawning. Now, on one hand, they're pretty easily taken out with a explosive somewhere in their general vicinity. But since I took out the nest already, explosives are going to be a little less than effective, considering it's going to hit that back wall and not really blow up anywhere near them. So instead, I'm going to waste several bullets trying to snipe it with a pistol, which is still probably the preferred way to take those couple out. They kind of bob up and down as they move around, so their patterns are pretty unpredictable and it makes it kind of a minor pain to get a beat on them. Making it, as you just saw, kind of tough to snipe them. I can hear a gunner. And he's not going to be tough to snipe. I just got to find him. There you are. And there you went. If you could take them out before they see you, it is far, far preferred. As you've seen how much damage their tiny rocks can do. They also like to set traps. Fairly obvious traps, but they're traps. Like I said, they're a tribal society. Not like this sleepy little guy. He's got all the tech he can possibly want and none of the skill on how to use it. I'd swear I remember that even though this is different water, that you could drown in it still, but it didn't happen at all during this playthrough, so I don't know what was wrong for me. Here we have new enemy number four, five. Had new enemy number four or five. The cave worms just kind of pop up out of the swamp and they'll try to lash at you. What you saw it do was pretty much the extent of its animations. Is that a torso it's cooking? That looked like a human torso. Well, I guess you gotta get your meat from somewhere. Anyhow, what you saw that cave worm do... Love the little my guns jammed animation that those guys do sometimes. Anyhow, what you saw that cave worm do was the extent of a cave worm's animations. And you'll see why that's a problem a little later. For now, we're going to take out this hornet's nest that's the size of a house. And see again why these wasps are such a spectacular pain. Because their attacks cause them to move down and forward, and then back up. Which means they're frequently out of the range of any of your melee weapons, 
and they're also flying around while they're doing this. So they're not even necessarily on your screen. So you've got to wait until they decide to continuously attack you from the same direction. Followed by getting lucky with, uh, or I guess not necessarily lucky, followed by just timing your swings well, which is something I haven't really grasped the concept of yet. That looks like progress. So let's see what's in the swamp first. Remember when I said you saw the extent of their animations? Sometimes they'll drop back underground like that when you kill them. Other times they'll explode like that first one did, and like that one did. And other times they'll just sit there and slowly fade out. It looks like they're still there. It looks like you're still shooting them, but they don't have any more health to take the damage of. And eventually they'll fade away like most other corpses in Turok 2 do. But you'll sink a bunch of ammo trying to, uh, Trying to kill a dead thing. We've got the first hey, of our here. trapped prisoners hey, over, over here. here. Helpfully yelling to us without moving anything. You're hey, related. Yeah. You're related to those little girls in the first level, aren't you? This is probably a mistake. I'm free. Thank you. Yeah, you're probably possessed by something that was yelling for freedom. That's... <sighs> okay. Now let's find an example of our other objective. You remember that satchel charge that we picked up? back there. We're going to use that to blow up this ammo dump. This is the one that we saw way back at the beginning of the level. Yeah, these guys have more health than I expected. Thankfully, they've got a decently high pain chance from the Warblade. Well, it worked. We've got four locks now. Well, let's not waste the ammo. Not when we could just kind of claw them off of the door. Come on. There we go. I don't... I don't know what I expected. Flashlight. Guess I should have seen that coming. Well, there are no enemies in these ammo dumps. Each one does have a full health, which is usually behind an ammo crate, like you saw there. We want to find this huge one and plan our satchel charge. Now it says five seconds until detonation, and yeah, we've got about five seconds to plant that and get the hell out of here because everything's exploding behind us and it will kill us. We can, however, pop back out and then pop right back in. Everything's blown up and we now have access to that full health that was behind the uh, one ammo box. We don't, however, have a flashlight. So it's usually a good idea to just kind of turn your map on in there. But with that out of the way, we can make our way back to that teleporter as there's nothing really left for us in this section.
love all the banners hanging everywhere. That's just perfect. Ooh. You are new. And you are also my favorite gun in the game. Now, if we place ourselves correctly, we can jump up and get it from beneath. But I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to get a rock chucked at me out of the darkness. And I'm going to show you how you're supposed to be able to get that gun. It's a little bit out of the way. On the upside, you can- wow. Uh... Sorry about that? Oh, that was convenient. It gave us exactly as many shotgun shells as we needed. Now, as you've seen me do to that guy, you can... Well, you can blow a hole in their chest. Which is always fun, but more importantly... More importantly, you can stop their shotgun... Or shockwave attacks with a, uh... Their pain chance. And up here, we can see the last of the new enemies in this level. This is a Perlin Juggernaut. They've got these huge masks on. They're armored as hell, so they take a lot of shots to go down. You can blow up their heads very nicely, but they walk around with these massive Sword of the Berserk style swords that have a little green energy thing on them. And that little green energy thing is used to fire off... Um... Well, energy blasts. And right there is where I was talking about watching the cave worms fade out. As once he stopped making noise and howling in pain, he stopped taking damage. He didn't have any more health. He was already dead, he just didn't realize it yet. Let's go back to that walkway. Because up this hill, is how we're going to get to our new toy. Good to know that there's a safe point up here. Considering, you know, how long it took me to find one on the last level. You're not even carrying around a full set of rocks. It is kind of neat that they actually put a texture in there for rocks. I just kind of wish they'd have moved it a little bit further up. That way the backpack looks a little bit fuller. Now, the spread on the shotgun you would think might be a little more helpful in taking out these wasps. And it is! No joke there, it's just legitimately more helpful. Because of that spread. Don't really want to waste all the shotgun shells on them usually. But we're about to replace the shotgun anyway. Shredder with the Shredder. 
the shredder shoots out a single bolt that explodes everywhere into shrapnel. If you're indoors at all, that shrapnel ricochets across everything. And eventually disappears, but... Until it disappears, it is wonderful. It changes how explosive rounds work, too. But instead of explosive rounds exploding into shrapnel, they have this kind of long beam that ricochets off of, again, everything until it eventually hits something and explodes. Both of the shots are pretty powerful. Greetings, Turok. How may I assist you? But we're going to see more of him next time. Till then, good hunting. Game save.